I have barricaded my front door with every furniture I own. It has held up for about a week now, but I don't think it will last much longer. I can hear that thing outside. It's a terrible sound. In any case, it doesn't matter if the door holds or not, because soon enough I will be out of food and after that it's just a matter of time. I'm hiding in my bathroom with my laptop right now, and I don't know what to do. My only hope at this point is that you can help me figure out what to do or what is going on. So let me explain my situation. I've lived in this apartment my whole life, and I've never experienced anything strange in it before. It's a four-room apartment located on Wallalavägen in Stockholm. It's a pretty central and expensive area. I was brought up here together with my older brother by my uncle. Our parents died when I was too young to remember, and I and my brother were left in the care of my uncle, who owned the apartment. Anyway, in 1993, when I was 18 years old, my uncle disappeared during a business trip to South Africa. His body was never found, but he was presumed dead just a year after his disappearance. It was believed that he had been kidnapped together with a group that stayed at the same hotel as him, who were all killed a year after they were taken. After my uncle was presumed dead, my brother and I inherited a fortune we never knew he had. My brother had already moved out and started his own life, his own family, so I was left with the apartment where I've lived ever since. Because of all the money, I never had to work. I do some jobs as a coder from time to time, but my major income is from investments my brother helped me make with my inheritance, inheritance uh, back in the day. I really thought my lonely days as a geek without a girlfriend would be over after I got rich, but as it turns out, there's more to it than money. Since I didn't have to work, I rarely met any people, and after a few years, I developed a social phobia that never went away. After those delivery firms that delivers groceries to the front door became a thing, I even stopped going outside to buy food. I think it's safe to say that I needed help long before this shit happened to me. My brother was right about that. Oh my god. My brother. I truly fucked up. This situation is such a clusterfuck. Anyway, since I so rarely leave my home, I don't really know when it started. But it happened sometime during the end of June, or at the beginning of July. Those days were, those days were extremely warm. In fact, it was the warmest July in Stockholm since they started measuring the temperatures. I was constantly sweating. All my windows were open and the sound from the city outside filled the apartment. I went online and ordered like six bottles of, bottles of coke to combat the heat and satisfy my unhealthy need for sugar. This was actually what led me to discover my horrible predicament. The delivery never came. I waited two whole days before I called them to ask where my coke was. To my surprise, they told me they had already been at my place and that no one had opened the door for them. I didn't believe them at first, but when the same thing happened with my food delivery, I started to doubt myself more than them. How could I have missed the sound of my otherwise so loud doorbell? I waited several days before I decided to leave my home, for the first time in I don't know how long, to buy my own food. And this is when my life turned into a nightmare. The first thing I noticed when I opened my front door and stepped out into the stairwell was the mild breeze, completely different from the hot air coming from my windows. The second thing I noticed was the smell. It's hard to describe. 
It smelled like moist wood mixed with an old fireplace. A couple of sunbeams came in through the broken window. On the floor there were a thick layer of dust and some mortar had fallen off the walls. I didn't know what to, what to think. This was certainly not normal for this part of Stockholm, or any part of it for that matter. But I hadn't been outside for several months, so it was perfectly possible that this could have happened while I had hidden away inside. Perhaps, I thought as I walked over to the elevator, they were in the middle of renovating the building or something, although that didn't really explain why the damages seemed so old. The elevator didn't work. It annoyed me since I'm not in a good shape and I lived on the 6th floor, so there was quite a lot of stairs to walk down. When I finally got down to the bottom floor I noticed that the walls were painted in the same color as when I was a kid. I assumed then that my, no that, that my renovation theory must have been correct and that they had chosen to go back to the old look. However, and perhaps I pushed that out of my mind because it just didn't fit my, with my expectation, there was a big graffiti on one of the walls. I didn't read it or even noticed it at this time, but when I came back I saw that it read, Close the fucking doors. The, the text was written in a dark red color. Outside the weather was mild. The extreme heat was gone. That was actually the first thing that made me scared, instead of just confused. It just felt so unnatural, like something was wrong at the most fundamental level. The next thing that frightened me was the complete lack of cars on the street in front of me, and the absence of the constant hum from the city. I stepped out on the sidewalk. I couldn't see a single person on this otherwise busy street. Another thing that was out of place was the vegetation growing everywhere. In every crack in the sidewalk or in the street something was growing. From where I stood it became clear to me, although I couldn't really believe it, that the city was abandoned. I continued down Odengatan, which is another busy street in central Stockholm, and found the same thing there, a complete lack of people. However, there was an abandoned bus in the middle of the street. It looked completely broken down. On its side, there was an ad. It was partly obscured, but I could read one line of text on it. We open doors. I went inside a grocery store, somehow still expecting to find food there. But of course, it was empty. Empty and dark. Every shelf seemed to have been looted. The only thing I found was a package of cheese. It was hard as a rock. I looked at the expiration date. It said the 10th of August 1993. My skin started to crawl when I saw that. What did it mean? I took the cheese with me and left the store. My heart was beating rapidly in my chest and my head was spinning. I felt dizzy. I had never had a panic attack before, but this seemed to be it. I couldn't breathe properly. Disoriented, I looked around without fixing my eyes at anything. I looked at the cheese again as to confirm what I had seen. And then I heard it. It was a sudden noise, impossible to describe. It was somehow metallic and organic at the same time and very, very loud. So loud, in fact, that it made me cover my ears. The noise was omnipresent, but when I focused on it, I could hear that it came from somewhere near the city center. It continued for maybe five minutes before it stopped. That sound terrified me to the bones. I ran home with my fossilized cheese in my hand as fast as I could. I was not ready to deal with the source of whatever that noise had, came, had been. Also, I needed to go home to think. The first thing I did when I came home was to look out the window. To my relief, everything was normal. 
the merciless heat, the never-ending traffic, the people. This was probably the first time ever that I was happy seeing other people. I went into the kitchen and placed the cheese on the table. For a few minutes, I just stared at it. Then I turned it over and looked at the expiration date again, thinking I might have read it wrong because of my anxiety. But the date was the same, the 10th of August 1993. Had I traveled back in time? My mind was exploring every possibility now, however absurd. This couldn't have been time travel. This couldn't have been time travel, I concluded. The cheese was clearly several decades old. It wasn't until now that I realized the true significance of the date. My uncle had disappeared that year, just a few days before. Was that a coincidence? I walked into the room where I basically just stored my uncle's old stuff and some of my own junk. I spent several hours trying to find a clue in this room, but the only interesting thing I found that caught my interest was a business card that had belonged to my uncle. Yellow Neutral Ink, it said, and under that was my uncle's name and phone number. No one had known what company he worked for, or at least no one had ever told me. I decided to google the name of the company. But it didn't come up with anything. Not too strange. The company probably went bankrupt a long time ago. A little disappointed, I suddenly realized something that made my blood freeze. I had been so occupied with trying to figure out what was going on that I hadn't thought about how much trouble I was really in. If my front door led to whatever horrible, horrible place I had just visited, how was I supposed to get out? I couldn't jump out the window since that would kill me. The real world felt so close. I returned to one of the windows and looked out. There it was. Civilization. And even though I could see it right there, I seemed to be cut off from it. I wondered if I could tie some sheets together like in some old movie, but I pretty much only owned two sheets. In the end, I decided to do something I hadn't done in over two years. I called my brother. When he picked up the phone, I didn't really know what to say. I couldn't exactly tell him the truth I wanted, uh, if I wanted to be believed. He would have thought I had gone completely mad. I had to think to, I had to think to come up with some excuse for him to get over to my place, and I must have sounded like an idiot when I couldn't immediately tell him why I had called. He asked if everything was alright. Obviously worried that something had happened to me on a psychological level. In the end, I just told him that I had come across some information about our uncle that I wanted to show him as quick as possible. At least, this was partly true. He asked me to, co he asked me to come over to his place. He even said his wife would cook dinner and everything. No, no, I said. I mean... And that would have been nice and all, but you really need to come here and see this with your own eyes. Um, there's this thing. David, can you just come over here? He was silent for a few seconds before he spoke. Are you sure everything is alright? You know, you really need to get out of that apartment more often. Yeah, thanks, I know. But you see, I just really need you to see this. Like now, okay? I was becoming frustrated. Calm down, Adam, he said. I will be over there in a few hours. Thanks, I said in relief. But hey, can you call me when you're outside? There is um, uh, there's something wrong with the door, so I will need... So, so I will have to, uh, <clears throat> to throw the keys out the window so you can open my front door from the outside. What the hell, man? Have you, locked your, have you locked yourself inside the apartment somehow? I could hear him uh, sighing. Okay, I will, I will call you when I'm there. Just wait. During the hours I had to wait, I didn't leave, I didn't leave the apartment. I only dared to look out the, out the peephole. 
I didn't see anything except for the decaying stairwell. But after standing there for about 10 minutes, just trying to collect my thoughts, I, fair, I faintly heard the noise I had heard when I was outside. It lasted just as long as when I had heard it the first time. I got goose, goosebumps from hearing it again and decided to get away from the front door. I went, in, I went into the, the living room and stayed there, trying not to panic, until my brother finally called me. I saw him standing on the sidewalk below, waving. I threw out my keys and yelled at him to come up and unlock my door. I thought that if someone opened the door from the outside, I would be able to get out. However, after about 5 minutes I started getting worried. He should have come up by now. Then my phone rang. It was my brother. Hey, where the hell are you? He asked. Where the hell are you? I said. I'm standing in your apartment. You, you are? My heart skipped a beat. What have you done to the place? No, 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 I said. You must be... It smells like someone died in here. And didn't you get this place renovated last year? This? My god, Adam. You really need help, man. Listen to me, I said. This would sound completely fucking crazy. But no, listen, please. Earlier today, when I tried to leave the apartment, I ended up somewhere else. Somewhere where everything were fucking dead, man. And, um... And I found this patch of cheese, cheese, you see. What the hell are you talking about, Adam? Cheese? Yeah, and the expiration date. It said it expired in 1993. This isn't funny, okay? I'm not trying to be funny. Fuck, listen. You must have entered my apartment in that other place. Hey, did you find our old Nintendo? Our old... No, I think you should get out of there now. Adam, I can hear you. He hear me? You have a sick sense of humor. I can hear you in the fucking bathroom, Adam. No, I'm not in the bathroom, man. Get out. Get the fucking out now. I could hear my brother walk over to the bathroom. And a few seconds later, the only thing I heard was his screams. He dropped the phone on the floor, but I could still hear him next to it. He was screaming. No, please, God! And then, then he went silent. Hello, I said. What's happening? Get out of there. I started to cry. David, I'm sorry, man. Suddenly, I heard something on the other end of the phone. David? I said, filled with hope again. But, but it wasn't David. It was something else. It sounded like a thousand children were whispering nonsensical words at the same time. A minute later, the call ended. Soon after this, I went back to my front door and looked out the people again. I didn't see anything new, but I could hear those horrifying whispers outside. I immediately barricaded the door with, <coughs> with tears running down my face. I have been hiding in my bathroom ever since. My brother's wife has been calling non-stop, but I'm too ashamed to pick up. She recently sent a text where she said she had been at my place, but that no one had opened the door. I'm relieved my brother locked the door from the inside. I can't imagine what would have happened if whatever killed my brother entered into our world. Sooner or later, someone will come and break the door down though. I don't know what to do. Please help me.